Only a few parts, I haven't seen the whole thing in the entire. How do you like the film? Very well done. It's really. And of course, the great advantage in this movie is that uh, Burma hasn't uh, changed much since those days, especially those jungle areas and on the banks of the Irrawaddy, where the INA did a lot of action. Those places are uh, practically the same. So it was very easy to reconstruct all the old... Uh, so how much you have participated in this? Well, I, uh, in Singapore, I uh, was uh, uh, there when uh, Netaji uh, came and when he gave the call for the INA uh, to be um, increased and civilians to be recruited and that big, very big uh, meeting that he had there on that Padang, Maidan. Then I was a member of the Netaji's government, so that Cathay Hall where the swearing in ceremony was uh, that is still there, though at that time that was the largest building, tallest building there, but now it's being blocked by uh, skyscrapers all around. So there, then my first uh, Rani of Jhansi Regiment camp was in Singapore. But that area has all undergone a lot of change, but still I was to recognize the place. In the call was given to Mujik Khun to Maitre Azadi Dhuva. Were you present at that time? Yes. When the call was given by Nitaji? Yes, I was very proud of that. That was the time when you were present at that time? Yes, yes, of course. I was. What exactly you have participated or helped in making this movie? Then, you see, Nitaji started this women's regiment, Rani of Jhansi ke regiment. And he made me the commander of that regiment. So, uh, I was uh, trained along with the other recruits and uh, I, I lived in the camp. Then I moved into Burma and uh, went further in Burma also, up to the middle of Burma, Mandalay and Nemeo. So, my participant was there, the participation was there till the end. And uh, I was arrested uh, by the British forces. and. Uh, I was kept in Burma for a whole year under house arrest and sent to India only after all the talks had uh, about the formation of provisional government and uh, partition and all that were over. Only after that I was sent back to India. I'm asking about the participation which you have played in the, in the creating the movie, in the film and about how much, how much you have participated. No, all the places that I where I was present and which is in all those, uh, I participated. Though they took se se separate interviews of um, myself, you know, there's one full episode of that, and then of uh, Colonel Dillon. Right. So you were as a captain in the yeah. cycle in And uh, what were the difficulties which you had to face at this age in uh, going through the process of making a movie? But process from the making of a movie yeah. at the age which you are having now. Now how many how much difficulties you have to face? In making the movie we had no difficulties at all. Everything was laid on. And not like those days when we actually participated and we had no transport, when we had to walk for miles and foot and uh, when we had uh, very little ration and constant uh, bombardment from the air. At so that time, there was a real difficulty. Now, this participation movement was very easy, very luxurious. At what age did you join the uh, I was uh, 28 at that time. 28. At the age of 28. I was already a doctor, you see, I had done my MBBS. And so, you, you went from uh, India, you went to yeah. Singapore and joined the So, can you tell me something very special which has happened in uh, that time? When you were in the army? No, this whole thing of, uh, uh, you see, after Netaji coming and uh, taking over this army, and this idea of forming a women's regiment, that was something very, very revolutionary, you know. And even I, though I was prepared, whatever he wanted me to, I would do. But I was very uh, surprised that we were able to get so many women. 1,500 women uh, joined this regiment. And they were all ordinary. Indian women, 
not very uh, highly educated or even uh, very strong, ordinary uh, housewives and coming from, uh, you know, working class families of people working in the rubber estates, in the PWD, and a few uh, petty shop keepers, business people, those kind of uh, women joined. And not only they joined, then they took up the training also very seriously and uh, they became sort of strong, healthy and they never panicked until the end they were determined to stay in the regiment. They didn't want, when they, Netaji wanted them to be dis disbanded, they were very unhappy and many of them signed petitions in their blood to Netaji to say that uh, we don't want to leave, we uh, will also undergo whatever has to be in store for us and you don't, don't send us back home. There is one controversy, just a minute. Yeah, and the name which is given uh, Forgotten Army, yeah. do you think it's really a Forgotten Army? It was, till very recently. And that name was given, you know, by uh, an American professor. He has written a book called The Forgotten Army. And uh, he was posted in uh, Kanpur in the IIT in the Department of uh, Humanities. He was a historian, Professor Peter Ward Fay. And my husband and I became very friendly with uh, him and through us he came to know about the INA. And he had never even heard of uh, the INA and about, about this whole thing, even so, the name of Subhash Chandra Bose. He is an American space. So you story. appreciate the name which is given to Forgotten Yeah, Army. yes. So there is still a controversy about the death of Netaji. You, you see, that controversy has been created. It is, uh, there should have been no controversy at all. And the controversy, you know, the people who are carrying on the controversy have not uh, produced any proof that that air crash, crash didn't. They are all going on conjectures that uh, Netaji went to Russia and actually he had an idea, but he couldn't contact the uh, people in Russia to find out whether they would give him asylum to he. So they hang on to that point and uh, the fact that the crash might, they say there is no log book to support that crash. But they don't realize what the situation was at that time. The Japanese were on, in fact they had surrendered. The atom bomb had been drawn, uh, dropped on Hiroshima. So at that point of time, how can you expect them to sit and make log books and make records and all that. They were busy destroying most of their records so that they shouldn't fall into the... So and the fact is that there is no controversy and he died in the crash. Yeah. You see, there was a, the BBC made a... One Rob... Uh, Charles Bruce of the BBC has made a documentary called Enemies of the Empire. And in that he interviewed the doctor who attended, the Japanese doctor who attended on Netaji after the crash. And his description, because he didn't know who this person was, of his height and body built and everything. And he said he was, uh, I knew that he was some very important person because all the uh, Japanese officers, they say, you must do everything you can to save him, you must try and save him. So, uh, but he said he was so badly burnt that even today with all the new developments in uh, medicine, we won't be able to, we wouldn't be, have been able to save him. While the movie was being made, I mean, the, the, the movie was being started, and they had some problem regarding the uh, Burma's objection and all. So, mm -hmm. what? How did you shut it off? I mean, you had to participate in that. No, because of that. Otherwise, the, uh, the idea was, you see, we would have uh, gone in the jeeps and then he would have stopped at all the places that uh, were very important to the INA and uh, done that whole uh, uh, the way the the, the in. Indian National Army uh, moved right up to Imphal. All that we would have done, but uh, we were not able to do it because of the restrictions imposed by the government of Myanmar. So didn't uh, didn't properly co contribute and uh, they didn't properly cooperate in. No, the, because you see, Burma is under uh, military uh, regime and they have a kind of not section 144, but they don't like more than eight people assembling. And uh, when we went. Hundreds of people came out on the roads because for, for them it was something new and something they wanted to do. And then, you know, Sunil Dutt was also with us. 
a film star. So that also gave us a little added publicity. So that was not a career. There is once more Netaji is here and there is a call from once again. Would you like to join and once again the Netaji Rami and message? I would, I would really like to join, but at my age, what, what use can I be? I can't uh, undertake all those same things. That, though, I'm a, though I must say that after coming back to India, especially in the last few years, my uh, life has been again very, very strenuous because of so many social uh, problems have arisen in this country and especially problems affecting women. And I'm actively associated. Yesterday, I was in Jaipur and demonstrating outside the uh, secretariat there because that poor girl who had been raped five or six months ago, again, again she was uh, raped. And so our women's association uh, organization, we were having our conference there, we all marched to the assembly. assembly and so these things are going on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.